rabbi was on his way back to Kleinstetl, and glad to be. The train seat was hard, and the carriage was cold, but half the journey was over, and in an hour or so he would be in his own house with Sophie's good cooking and her loving interest in all the happenings of his two-day trip to Polyns, a fair-sized city on the other side of the province. As a rule, there was little unusual to tell, thought Mark. These trips were generally for the same reasons, a synagogue business or to fill in at a service for a sick colleague, occasionally to preside at a wedding or funeral of moved away from Kleinstetl folk who would have no other than Rabbi Mark for such important matters. Then Mark shifted and felt the big bruise on his backside. He smiled to himself. Yes, there was something to tell Sophie. Not about the first day, or indeed the morning of the second day, all very ordinary and standard till then. No, it had begun as he stood outside the railway station checking train times on the written-up notice. It was midday. Suddenly he received a great kick in the rump, accompanied by a roar of laughter. Mark turned in anger. He was middle-aged, but strong and fit and ready to do battle. Facing him was a man of much his own age, but bigger, his head forward, his hand outstretched. Boris! he roared. Why, you old... Here. You're not Boris. No, said Mark, and there are other ways to greet a friend. My name is Mark. The man was crestfallen and embarrassed. Not Boris the butcher. No, said Mark. Mark the rabbi. A rabbi? said the man. Oh, 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 oh that's worse. Oh I'm, oh, I'm truly sorry, Reverend. Nothing personal, believe me. No, nothing anti-Jewish. I'm no Cossack, no. Not militia or, or special police. A rabbi? Oh, oh. To kick a rabbi. He was truly contrite. Oh, I sincerely ask your pardon, Reverend. Mark's anger was long gone. Don't feel too badly, he said. I'm less a rabbi that end than this end. The man, after a moment, had chuckled. I didn't know rabbis made jokes, he said. Only after unprovoked bodily assault, said Mark. The man pondered. How long before your train, Rabbi? About an hour and a half. Oh, come and eat with me. I owe it to you. I don't often meet a Rabbi. Men of the cloth are not my usual company. I sell guns. Mark was intrigued and agreed. They went to a cafe not far from the station, where the man was obviously known. The owner was respectful in his greeting to Mr. Litvinov, who was asked to ignore the bill of fare and order whatever he liked, and for your friend also. Potatoes in butter and pork chops, as said Litvinov. Same for you, Reverend. Some lemon tea only said Mark. There are certain restrictions as to what Jews may eat. Oh, of course, said the gun seller. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know about it. Uh, 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 trafe, right? Trafe. Kosher is permitted. Trafe not. Right? Right, said Mark, and went into it a bit for his interested and lively new friend. When the food came, it smelt and looked delicious. Mark strong-mindedly ate a boiled egg with his tea, watched with some amusement by Litvinov, who put away six pork chops in no time at all. As he wiped his moustache, he said, uh, They make up a marvellous seafood salad for me here. Lobster and crab with a sweet sour sauce. Beautiful. Fancy, Rabbi? Mark shook his head. Traif? asked Litvinov. Traif, said Mark. When the dish arrived, it was beautiful, with a most delicate aroma. What, said the gun seller, if your very life 
depended upon eating trife. Do your laws cover that? Oh, fully, fully, said Mark. Emergency laws, uh, where life or even health is endangered. Litvinov took a mouthful or two, looking at Mark with a set face. He put down his fork. This is some kind of Jewish joke, he said suddenly, to pay me back for kicking you. A lot of blasted rubbish! He kicked his chair violently away as he stood up. He opened his bag and took out a huge pistol. His eyes were murderous. He pushed his plate across to Mark. Eat! he roared. Eat! Or I'll blow your blasted head off! Mark did as he was told, until the plate was empty. He wasn't too surprised when the gun was put back in the bag and the big man's smile came back. A boiled egg is no meal for a grown man, and said Litvinov. Don't be angry. It's a joke only. Say you're not angry, Reverend. Mark grinned. Why shouldn't I be angry, he said. If you'd started your joke earlier, I'd have tasted pork as well. They parted good friends, exchanging addresses. Come to us for a meal, said Mark. Nothing trafe, and the best cooking in the province. <laughs> <laughs>